bad diets. The bad, the good, and the really ugly. So the ketogenic or keto diet. Hi, I'm Libby Parker, registered dietitian, and I'm here to dispel some common diet myths by breaking down the science. So today we're talking all about the ketogenic diet. So what is it? The ketogenic diet is a high fat, low carbohydrate, moderate protein diet aiming to force the body to break down fat instead of glucose for fuel. Typically, this is about one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight, which is normal, with 10 to 15 grams of carbohydrate per day and the rest of the intake coming from fat. In contrast, a normal healthy diet is about 225 to 325 grams of carbohydrate per day. Big difference. In its most extreme form, the ratio of fat grams to combined carbohydrate and protein grams is four to one. This should only be done under medical supervision. The low carb, high fat diet means that there's less glycolysis, breakdown of glucose for energy, and more beta oxidation of fats, which creates ketone bodies, which become the main energy source. The three ketone bodies created are beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is found in blood serum, acetoacetate, found in urine, and acetone, which is responsible for that bad breath. History. Okay, the ketogenic diet is nothing new. Officially recognized in the 1920s, this diet was developed for treating seizure disorders called epilepsy. In 1921, two groups of researchers proposed that a low-carb, high-fat diet could be used for treatment of seizure disorders by inducing ketosis without starvation which has been proven to be very effective in this population. Today, there are less restrictive versions marketed for weight loss, often known as the modified Atkins diet and the low glycemic index diet, which became popular at the end of the 20th century. So the good? For a general healthy person, so people without diabetes or an eating disorder, short-term ketosis is not overly harmful, but it can develop into ketoacidosis. More on that later. For people with seizures, according to research from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, ketone bodies have been found to inhibit gametobutyric acid receptor-induced seizures. Ketogenic diets have been found to increase production and synaptic release of gametobutyric acid, thereby reducing neuronal excitation and seizure activity by decreasing the conversion of glutamate to aspartate, as well as potentially blocking neuronal uptake of glutamate through the presence of serum acetoacetate. In addition, some ketone bodies may result in membrane hyperpolarization due to increases in adenosine triphosphate potassium channel activity, potentially reducing the release of neurotransmitters and inhibition of action potentials. Furthermore, ketones have been found to reduce reactive oxygen species and inflammation that results from seizure activity. So the bad. Well, first of all, this diet is really hard to follow. Even on a modified Atkins plan, which is the simplest of the keto variations, this diet is really difficult to adhere to, especially when eating socially. If the individual is able to maintain the diet, it may lead to social isolation and or the development of eating disorders. To properly do the keto diet, you should have a team of specialized medical professionals checking ketone levels frequently. This requires daily blood glucose and ketone checks. So if you don't do needles and aren't good at checking things, this is not for you. Okay, malnutrition. Supplements are required due to the lack of vitamins, minerals, and other compounds that we can only find in carbohydrate-rich foods like fruits and vegetables, which are extremely limited on this diet. Check out my research on the supplement industry and why supplements should not be the go-to for a healthy diet. Links below. The practice paper of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics says that daily multivitamins are required, plus vitamin D, and sometimes additional supplementation. Additionally, Many supplements have carbohydrates as part of the formula, so you have to be careful which ones you choose to maintain such a low carbohydrate intake. All right, the keto flu. Ugh. The first few days, or longer depending on your tolerance level, typically include fatigue, headaches, nausea, constipation, hypoglycemia, or acidosis. Additionally, as the diet progresses into more fat and less fiber, there are often gastrointestinal issues and discomfort, which might not go away until the diet's discontinued. We have some carbohydrate-reliant cells. Our cells with few or few to no mitochondria are carbohydrate-dependent and must be still fueled by glucose. These cells include certain cells with no mitochondria that are in our blood, which is in our erythrocytes, our eyes, such as the cornea, lens, and retina, 
And cells with few mitochondria include redenal medulla, testes, and leukocytes. They're really ugly. Okay, I said I would come back to this. Diabetic ketoacidosis. It's when your body is breaking down fats to create ketone bodies, and they may build up to dangerous levels, causing ketoacidosis. This is more common in diabetics, and symptoms include excessive thirst, frequent urination, nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, weakness or fatigue, shortness of breath, that fruity scented acetone breath, and or confusion. While this is uncommon among non-diabetics, Mayo Clinic researchers found a non-diabetic woman who experienced ketoacidosis. On a ketogenic diet for four years of low carbohydrate intake, they estimated her carbohydrate intake was often less than 20 grams per day. When she was put on a diet containing normal amounts of carbohydrates, her fasting plasma glucose concentration and results of oral glucose tolerance tests were normal. With a normal carbohydrate intake, she had no more episodes of ketoacidosis. So unfortunate symptoms on a keto diet include constipation, dehydration and electrolyte, and micronutrient deficiencies as the most common. More serious complications include increased chances of kidney stones, gallbladder problems, and bone fractures, especially in children. And menstrual irregularities often occur in women with potential impact on fertility. For those with eating disorders, this diet is absolutely contraindicated in people with eating disorders or those with the predisposition for eating disorders. In addition to malnutrition, it fosters a restrictive mindset and good versus bad foods instead of creating a positive relationship with food. In conclusion, overall there's a major lack of research in the use of ketogenic diets for any populations other than those with epilepsy. At this time, the only peer-reviewed literature on this diet is specific to humans with epilepsy and diabetes. We don't know the long-term effects of this diet on individuals without seizure disorders, and long-term studies are needed to measure changes in nutritional status and body composition during the low-carbohydrate diet and to assess fasting and post-eating cardiovascular risk factors and adverse effects. Without that information, low-carbohydrate diets cannot be recommended. The position of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics only recommends diets for those of whom evidence-based science studies have been performed. So again, low carbohydrate diets are not recommended for the general population. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please hit the subscribe link below and be watching for the next videos I have coming out. I plan to do more of these debunking diet videos, so please let me know which diets you're interested in hearing broken down like this.